hello and welcome back to the channel today is gonna be a super fun day it's my first ot today and i'm so excited to show it to you guys it's currently 6 45 a.m and i'm literally the only soul in the college i did my punching taken the department keys and now i'm gonna go to the department and i shall take you along I was literally so scared thinking that someone was following me. Turns out it was my senior. This is Dr. Abhishek Rao, guys. Follow him on Instagram. He has a super fun page there. This is our department. Welcome to our department. This is the OP table. This is the UG section. And uh, that's again my senior, Abhishek sir. And yes, this is my favorite person here, Dr. Aparna ma'am. This is a very exciting dental compressor. And we've packed all the items for the OT. These are all sterilized morning walk with all the equipments and the most dearest senior oh god <laughs> can you tell how you feel <laughs> i woke up at like 6 o'clock on this <laughs> what did you feel abhishek yes usually okay this Hey guys, so I'm finally back from the OT out of the scrubs and I'm just chilling in the lounge right now working on my JC that I have coming up in a few weeks. Just trying to finish as much as work as possible because I want to start studying for my exams, the first year basic sciences exams that we have. So yeah, a little about the OT experience. It was surreal. Like I never thought that, you know, we could have like proper OTs in pedo simply because we weren't aware of it in our UG days. So apparently what we do is uh, if there's an incorporative child and the child is not, you know, like cooperating even for basic oral examination, forget like, you know, doing procedures on the child. So what we do is we try and take the consent of parents and we do the entire treatment under general anesthesia. So you, most of the cases that go under GA are for full mouth rehabilitation. And this was a three-year-old patient that we did uh, Full mouth rehabilitation in so it basically it involves procedures from like you know GIC restorations composite restorations pulpectomies pulpotomies giving space maintainers or giving any sort of habit breaking appliance or anything like that so basically you know take an overlook of what problems are there in the mouth and its appropriate treatments so it was a great experience we had a great team and i'm so glad that you know i could learn so much it was such 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 a good experience so yeah before anyone walks in, I think I'll see you in a bit. We are back from a hot shower and I love taking hot showers at an end of an tiring day because it can really, you know, rejuvenate you. And I definitely needed one because it was such a long day. I'm taking, I'm done taking a shower and now I have to take care of this face. And today I'm going to use Mama Earth Aloe Vera Face Wash and Mama Earth Aloe Vera Gel Face Moisturizer. These two are amazing products and uh, given the fact that you know, uh, Bangalore has a weather of its own, like morning, it's so hot in the evening, it's so cold. My skin is also going through those phases and I feel like, you know, my skin has become so dehydrated, dull. So, um, if you don't know, aloe vera is one of the most versatile ingredients out there and it can suit almost all types of skin types. And uh, this has ashwagandha. So if you don't know, ashwagandha is a ingredient that, you know, is filled with antioxidants and it can really help with inflammation. So anyone out there struggling with inflammation and you don't know what type of ingredient to use, just blindly go ahead with aloe vera because it, it won't irritate your skin. And uh, it also has glycerin. The gel face moisturizer has glycerin. So it's going to lock up all that moisture that you're putting into your skin and it's going to give you this beautiful glow. So to start off with, I want to first use the aloe vera face wash. This has a beautiful texture. This is how the texture looks like. It's clear. So this is how it looks like when you wet your face. It's definitely foamy, but it's not, you know, harsh on the skin. 
it feels very very gentle and very moisturizing actually i read it somewhere you know like if you work the product onto your skin for like a proper 1 minute that's when it starts to make a difference so i'm going to do that <laughs> so i'm going to go wash off this product now don't forget the neck guys i'm going to wash it off and then i'll come and tell you how the skin feels like i just am done washing my face and can you see that glow that it's given i really like that and now before the skin starts to get really dry i'm going to apply the gel face moisturizer i love the texture of this it's so creamy and so lightweight i love that you know the thing about the formula is it's so lightweight that it's not going to leave your skin feeling greasy which will happen if you you know use the aloe vera directly from the plant first of all it's a very time consuming thing and you have to like sit and scrape it and all that but even after all that hard work it's going to leave your skin feeling very sticky and greasy which i don't like so i absolutely love using something like this i'm just going to apply it that feels good ah it has a very calming and cooling sensation that is so relaxing <laughs> With all that being said and done, uh, I would always recommend to do a patch test before using a new product because it's it's safer that way. And yeah, so now I'm just gonna go put on some um, kajal and maybe a lipstick or a lip gloss or something and get back and then we shall continue. We're back now. Let's start off with the neat Q and A sessions. The first question that we have is, what is the fees? Now, fees will differ based on whether you're opting for All India Counselling or K A Counselling because most of you have asked about K A Counselling. I'm gonna answer regarding that. So in KA counseling you have four types of seats. First is your government, second private, third management and fourth is NRI. So based on which type of seat you're choosing the fees will vary. If you go opting for a government seat, if you're opting for a government seat in a government college then your fee is going to be somewhere from 60,000 to 70,000. If you're opting for a government seat in either a private or a, a deemed university then your fee is going to be somewhere around 3 lakhs to 4 lakhs. If you're opting for a private seat, then your fee will somewhere be from six lakhs to seven lakhs. If you're opting for a management seat, it will differ based on which course you're taking and which college you're opting for. So you can expect uh, somewhere from eleven lakhs to twenty to twenty-two lakhs. Now, uh, courses like orthodontics, endodontics, surgery, and uh, even pedodontics, these are courses that are most often chosen. or opted for so the fees for them is also respectively higher especially ortho and endo they are one of the highest and then after that is your uh, surgery and after that comes pedodontics prosthodontics and so on so when you opt for options like omr or maybe like oral pathology or something like that or phd for that matter the fees is is like a fraction of what you're paying if you're opting for endo or ortho Next coming on to NRI seats this will be standard and this will be either similar to what they are charging for a management seat or they can or it can be 2 to 3 lakhs more so you can expect somewhere again from the range of 11 lakhs to 20 to 22 lakhs please ask me that uh vsdl college is good um it's good for branches like say um surgery it's good for surgery and endodontics endodontics is the number one branch in that college because um, of the different types of procedures that they're teaching you and all of that but i have to mention that you have to buy all your materials so that is going to cost you a bomb so please keep that in mind when you're opting for endo in vsnl college because they use everything hi-fi which means that you have to buy everything hi-fi which means that you have to spend from your pocket but otherwise um, it's a great branch to choose in vs after that you have surgery and you have pedodontics now uh, from my personal point of view i would say pedodontics was a good option in vs because of the fact that you know we have we get to do ga cases we get to do a lot of things but again same thing for us we have to buy our own stuff in order to learn uh there is a lot of material shortage in this college and it completely drives me nuts at times but yeah overall the staff are good the type of uh, cases that we're getting is also good and the patient inflow is excellent i still i remember in my ug days that we used to hardly see like 15 to 20 patients a month whereas in vs dental college we get a minimum of you know like 10 patients a day which is really really good so yeah and infrastructure wise it's a good college they have a lot of extra curricular activities now and then and does it include if i say i mean uh, if i say that there's no parking available like that's going to be a big problem so if you're getting your cars it's going to be a big problem i don't know if that 
falls into this category that I just thought I'll mention. The next question that we have is what is what are the best private colleges for pedodontics and other subjects in Karnataka? See, uh, in Karnataka, I don't have much idea because I never researched about it because I never wanted to opt for any other college in Bangalore. I mean, in Karnataka other than Bangalore. So I have no much idea. But based on what, I mean, where my friends are from and all of that, I would say that JSS is one of the best colleges. It's a deemed university after JSS. You have um, STM, you have AJ Shetty, you have Bapuji Dental College. They're all one of the very, very good and reputed colleges. If you talk about colleges in Bangalore, number one is MS Ramaya, second is RD Dental College, then you have VS Dental College, Kaylee Dental College, Raja Rajeshwari is also good. This question that we have is, can other state people apply for Karnataka counseling? Yes, you can. It doesn't matter if you're not a non-domicile, I mean, if you're a non-domicile, it's okay, you can still apply for uh, the state counseling, but I think that you will not be eligible for government quota. So you'll have to either opt for private or management seats. Next question is, what is the right time to start meet PG prep? So this is a question that has bombarded my DMs, it has bombarded my email, it has bombarded my Q&A session. I want to keep this short because I have a whole video coming up on this two weeks from now. So stay tuned, ring the, press the ring button, what is it, notification bell so that you don't miss on that video. Uh, so to keep it short, I would say that the right time to start is as early as possible. I would say start off from your first year itself because it's going to be so super beneficial for you. Simply because whatever you're studying now or whatever you're going to study throughout your BBS is what your NEET MBS question paper is going to be based on. Which means that whatever is your daily topic, like whatever is the syllabus, is your syllabus for NEET MDS. Obviously, there is going to be 10 or 20% of the paper, which will be a bouncer, but those are topics that you are not going to be unfamiliar with. If you just extend your preparation a little more, you can definitely crack those questions as well. So my suggestion is to start as early as possible. If you want to know how to revise, how to memorize, what books to use and all of that, then stay tuned. So, so the that next question that we have is, if not qualified, can I get a seat? No. Uh, it's a simple no. If you are not qualified, if you do not have the passing percentile, then there's nothing that can be done. I've mentioned this even in the previous video that don't fall prey to those people who tell you that you pay me so much amount, I'll get you the seat. It's not possible. Everything is through NEET only. Even in KEA counseling, they will refer to your NEET rank only. So please don't fall for that. The next question is good online coaching platforms. So I did not opt for any online coaching platform. My preparation was on my own and I barely prepared. So, but um, based on all my friends and their experiences, I would say CDs is the best and CDs does have an online program. And even if you are open to opting for their offline coaching program, please do. But I uh, personally feel that there's no need for coaching program if you do your preparation well. Again, I will explain a bit more on that in my upcoming video. Yeah. So somebody has asked me what will be the expenses. So I assume they, they've just written expenses. So I assume they're asking the expenses in doing need MDS. I say that if you're opting for clinical options like um, again ortho or prosto, pedo, endo, then it's going to cost you a hell lot. I've already mentioned this. Excuse me for laughing because I have endured so much expenses by buying material itself. When you are a PG student, you are expected to have everything. You are expected to buy everything. And if you, if your college doesn't provide the basic, like how mine doesn't, then your expenses will double. So please keep in mind that if you're opting for clinical options, spare yourself like a lakh or two to buy materials throughout the three years course. And uh, I forgot to mention this in my previous video. I'm glad that I have an opportunity to say this now. Uh, your thesis, your LD, and then at the end of three years, when you submit all your work, um, you're gonna spend a bomb. And you are required to publish your research. You have to publish your thesis somewhere. So you are again going to end up paying 30,000 to like 60, 70,000 in publishing that article and all. So I think like overall, if you put it, three, four lakhs will go just like that in, you know, buying materials, publishing theses, taking printouts, making your thesis folder, LD folder and all that. So keep that in mind. I did not know that by the way. <laughs> So the next question is, is choosing a non-clinical option a good option? Uh, I would say no. See, you have done an undergraduate course 
in which your clinical skills is what is highlighted okay so if you're going to do your mds in a non clinical subject then it's not going to pay you off well at the end of the day everyone has to see how much you're going to earn right so you, choosing a non clinical option and that too in a country like india would be an absolute waste so i would say that don't go for non clinical subjects rather spend that money in diploma courses you have a lot of diploma courses these days where they teach you you know these short they they have these short courses on uh, endo prosto then aesthetic dentistry cosmetic dentistry so spend your money in that because that will really help the next question i think the second last question for today what are the branches that are difficult to get so clinical branches especially endo ortho surgery prosto pedo these five are the top uh, clinical subjects that we have and these five are the most difficult to get the higher the rank the seats in like ortho endo and surgery get filled and after that like the middle rank is uh, the people who opt for prosto or pedo After that uh, the last question is what are the cut off marks for clinical subjects to put it simply the higher the rank the higher chance that you land a clinical um, seat so i guess that's all for today i hope that you guys liked it if you did then give this video a huge thumbs up and stay tuned uh my schedule is like crazy right now and i don't know how i'm doing it but i'm doing it for you guys so please show me some love and support share this video like it comment down below engage with it so that it can reach more people and that will indeed motivate me to you know be on track so please do that and until next time this is divya signing off thank you so much for watching take care and bye